Hello everyone, today we are going a little more in depth with the Slate AX uh, router from GL.inet. This is a travel router, 556 gigabit uh, travel router from GL.inet. It was offered last year. I've had this device for about uh, six months, five and a half, six months at this point, and I find it to be a phenomenal device. Uh, its primary purpose of my household at this point is a backup for my main router. I have the same configuration set up on it that way in case my main router goes down. I update the firmware and something, you know, if there's any firmware issues on it, I can just connect this guy up, bring it right back up, and everything will be seamless. Given that it also it has the same configuration as my home router, it also serves the purpose of a perfect travel router that I could take with me when I'm traveling domestically in U.S., uh, given that it's a little bulkier unit, you I prefer not to take this internationally, but domestically it's perfect for that purpose because all my devices will automatically connect to it. It's the same SSID as my home network and the range, the the coverage, Wi-Fi coverage is phenomenal on this unit. Uh, for reference, at my home, I use the AX1800, which is actually the Wi-Fi 6 home router version. Uh, from gl.inet uh, that came out roughly in 2021 I believe if I'm not mistaken it's been running at my house ever since I got it I did a pre-order on that unit it's been in my house since then I have been using it every single day all my devices it's a primary network for me uh, all my devices connect to it without a problem and this uh, is essentially that in a smaller packaging and I believe if I'm not mistaken I, I can make a assumption that their Wi-Fi coverage this little unit provides is almost identical to the full-fledged home router that I have because I have for testing purposes brought that network down completely brought this unit up instead as a router replacement I did not notice any any issues with device connectivity speeds performance between the two units and to me that was actually very surprising uh, this unit, this AXT1800 Slate AX, is able to replace the Flint device, which is a fully functional home router. And it's something that I would even go as far as saying is ideal for somebody that has a studio apartment, one bedroom, two bedroom apartment, and it works great for that functionality. So, without much further, you know, like talking more about it, let me just go over the device. I. I currently use, keep it in this little tiny box that I received for a wrap power battery. Uh, unfortunately, the battery didn't make it through eventually after a couple of years of usage. So, but I, it serves, it serves a good travel box container for this thing. It's a hard shell. So it actually protects the device inside very good. I'm going to open it up so I can take a look inside. Basically, I have a USB-C cable up there and then I have the actual power supply that comes with the router itself. Let's take a look at it and then we'll power this on, look at the power requirements, see if it comes on. Uh, the power supply is included with the original purchase, uh, however, only comes with a US adapter. This is one of the reasons why I only use it domestically, I did not travel with this internationally and also given the, the size part, this is slightly bulkier than the barrel AX that I have. And if you look over here, the power requirements are 5 volts at 2 amps with a total of 20 watts. I don't think I have ever seen this router use this much power. But I'm going to power this up. That way you guys can take a look at, look at it for yourself and see what the power requirements are. I cannot actually bring down my whole net, home network at this point. So I am going to only replicate by connecting a few devices to it. Do a speed test a few times to see how much power it draws. And for testing, I'm using this Power Extra battery pack that I have uh, because it actually displays a numerical value for the watts being drawn by any given connected device. So I'm only going to power on the AC plugs right now. The watts are zero watts. Okay, I'm going to take the router out and connect it. And while it's powering on, I'll go over some more interesting facts and details about the router itself. So this is the unit. In my previous video, as you guys saw, Wi-Fi 6 comes with a micro SD card, which the Barrel AX does not have. 
one additional part is it has two LAN ports and a band port. An additional LAN port makes a big difference if you are planning to use it in a hotel environment with devices that are wired in. It'd be great for that functionality. On this side, the standard buttons, the toggle, beep in policies, or mode button, and a reset button there. And the front part is where the LED is. So let me just go ahead, go ahead and connect this. And as the device powers on, I'm going to go over a couple of some of the specs over here and some of the features that I personally prefer on this device compared to the Barrel AX. So this device, personally, I, I purchased it as a replacement for my aging uh, AR750S, which was the old travel router I had. It was just getting too old, fully functional still. I've had it for about five years at this point. I've had no issues with it at all. It's just functioning. It just doesn't support Wi-Fi 6. It's aging, uses micro USB power cables. It uh, doesn't have that much of a range as this guy does. This has phenomenal Wi-Fi coverage. And uh, if you're traveling, you're staying at an Airbnb or a hotel or a cruise liner, it makes perfect sense to have this device because you can create your own localized network. The host network you're connecting to will not be able to see things traffic-wise, your files that you're accessing, websites you're accessing, especially since natively it once opened up the RT21. Uh, given the fact that it also has gigabit ports, makes a big difference, has AdGuard built into it, so while you're traveling, it, it will block off majority of the advertisements that you're seeing, speeding up the speeding up things. It support, supports multi-user MIMO, uh, uh, has DFS as well, so allows you to connect DFS networks. And one of the main reasons that I actually chose this guy to be the replacement for the AR750S is the fact that it supports EAP networks which is primarily the case that I connect to for work purposes when I'm at work. And this works great for that purpose, for my testing lab environment at home at work. And that was the main reason that I purchased this device. But that being said, I increasingly find myself using the Barrel AX a lot more work now. I don't use the AP network as much, but having that functionality in this unit makes, you know, like that, that option being available to me. I just don't use it actively anymore as much for that functionality. And uh, the Barrel AX being more compact, more portable, less power requirements, makes it a much more ideal device for me to use day to day at work. And that being said, this is a perfect replacement for home. So this primarily sits at home for me and when I'm traveling domestically, driving to some place for, you know, like small getaway vacation. I will be take. I usually always take this unit with me, and then basically it runs my whole network. Uh, something like this, so you can take on a cruise, where you have to pay per device for Wi-Fi connectivity. You can just pay for one device, have this guy connected to it, and all your devices behind there will connect to it. The range is actually pretty good in a cruise liner. Uh, at any point, it's, the range actually extends outside the room. So, unless you're planning and you know you want to use Wi-Fi outside on the deck or something, then you could clone this the MAC address from your main device and then have other devices connected to it, or else you can just leave this in your room connected all day and you can come back in and all your devices will connect to it and allow you to access the internet as needed. So right now the device in standby mode is fully powered on. Uh, so as you can see, it's using a four watts of power over here. This battery pack over here that I have for reference is a 300 watt hour. Our actual battery size is about 290, 289 watt hour. So it's called 300, but it's actually 289, I believe. So it's telling me that roughly it will take 46 hours before this battery is drained out, given this unit's only the, the device connected 44. Oh, as you can see, it's actually fluctuating quite a lot. So it goes on as, as low as 28 hours. <coughs> now I'm going to connect a few devices to it.
Okay, right now I have two devices connected to it and I'm going to one speed test on both devices at the same time. This device over here is a Galaxy S8 device. It's like the older not Wi-Fi 6. And the second device that I've connected is actually a gaming laptop with the Wi-Fi 6 card. So we'll do a speed test concurrently at the same time. And sure enough, it's actually prioritizing my desktop. That actually has a Wi-Fi card. On desktop, I'm hitting Two ninety-eight by two. Well, I lied. Two ninety-eight by three twenty. Oh, going higher. Three thirty-six. The the network I'm connected currently the router is connected and repeating or in router mode is three hundred by three hundred. It's a Verizon FiOS network, so usually the three hundred cap is slightly higher, even though they say three hundred by three hundred. So usually like three thirty. So ten percent buffer space there. So let me just run a speed test on this unit only by itself, or I'm just on the phone. So you can see the power usage went up slightly. To six watts. Now, the power supply is rated for 20 watts. I'm only using a four watts when it's just idle. And when I'm actually doing speed tests, it goes up as high as six watts. As you can see, six watts. So to answer some of your questions, I'm pretty certain you could just use this device with a USB adapter that is rated at three amps as well but that would be without a problem without, without an issue i would not recommend going anything lower than three amps for this axt 1800 router uh, slate ax simply because then at that point you might be starving it and uh, you will be seeing undesired results in most cases uh, also to point out currently like i explained earlier i'm connected to a net uh, fios uh, fiber network that is rated at 300 by 300 and uh, repeating it I'm roughly uh, about 20 feet away in a different room than where the router is placed which is the AX1800 which is the, flip, the router and this is about 20-25 feet away and there's one wall in there same floor and it's repeating that network uh, right now I don't have any other devices it's using a bandwidth besides you know like IoT devices and the speed it's pulling on speed test is 282 by 313. On the desktop side, on a gaming laptop that's connected to a Wi-Fi 6 wireless card, it's pulling up 298.5 download speed and 336 by 0.42 upload speed. So slightly better performance on Wi-Fi 6, but given that this is not Wi-Fi 6 device, that's still actually pretty phenomenally impressive numbers over there. Ping on the Wi-Fi 6 device is 7 milliseconds, away 16. So there's slightly performance, better performance Wi-Fi 6. So you will see a better, slightly better edge of performance when you use a Wi-Fi 6 device with this Wi-Fi 6 router. But otherwise, no difference at all. So to wrap up this video, I just want to go over a few things about this router that I would say would be the main reasons for you to purchase it. It serves a great travel router for domestic users, given the fact that it only comes with the US plug. If you want to use their plug itself, you can use it. If you want to take this router travel with you traveling, I would recommend a minimum of three amp USB-C uh, 
power adapter, like 5 volts, 3 amps, like a fast charger, a quick charger would be sufficient. It has the adequate ports that you need. It has a micro SD card port for hosting your files locally, pictures, documents, music. It does have two fully functional LAN ports and a LAN port that can be configured as needed as well. So it has three gigabit ports, one USB 3.0 port, which makes it a slightly better device to have more devices connected to it. Range is actually phenomenal when you even compare it with the Barrel AX. One of the additional bonus that I personally went for is speeds over WireGuard. So this unit is capable of 515 megabits per second WireGuard speeds. So if you're connecting WireGuard server at home, uh, host the server someplace else, you could achieve those speeds given the network, the host network that you're connecting this router to supports that bandwidth. 550 is actually pretty, pretty great bandwidth for having all your devices supported over it. It runs OpenWR 221.02 out of the box, supports DFS networks, supports EAP networks. Uh, the wireless cart for 2.4 gigahertz in here is rated at 600 Mbps and the 5 gigahertz network is supported for 1200 Mbps. Uh, it's out of the box. It supports a lot of, a lot of, a lot of VPN providers. You can also always import your own VPN configurations to it. That is what I do, my personal use case for this. So uh, as I was previously saying, I have the Flink router at home from gl.inet. I run a WireGuard server on that. And when I'm traveling, this is running a 24 seven uh, WireGuard VPN pointing to my home router. So I can browse things as if I'm sitting at home at all times, even when I'm away from home, I can get access to all my regional content over here without any issues. The micro SD port supports up to 512 gigabytes of a micro SD card, which is another plus point. Uh, the Barrel AX does not have a micro SD card. Uh, and that actually brings us to the end of this discussion. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to answer them. But the mo most common question I saw was power usage in my videos. As you can see, right now it's at idle, just sitting there, four to five watts, which is about five volts at one amp. And that's pretty adequate. I would never recommend this device to be connected with a power adapter that's less than two amps at five volts. I just don't think that would be a good idea because at that point you will be starving it. Uh, I would recommend, highly recommend, 3 amp and above for this. So it's, because otherwise you will run into undesired issues like uh, the Wi-Fi wi range might not be adequate for you, random reboots, crashes, and I would just not go that route at all. I have uh, I've never been able to exceed or even reach 15 watts of usage, power usage, and when I've been traveling within using it for you know travel purposes. Given that the, the most amount of device I've connected at any time while I'm traveling is about uh, five to six at most, it would be a lap, like two laptops, two phones, a tablet, a switch, maybe a streaming device. So I think the highest I've been able to reach is maybe eight. And if I'm taking camping with friends, maybe maybe ten devices at, at a given time. And in an open campground area, given that everybody's all around you, this actually reaches all the campsites, all the little tents we have. If you go to a lodge, again, works perfect, covers the entire space. It's so much more portable to carry with you. And given that it actually could be run off a USB, you could actually bring a battery pack with you like this and just connect this up and run it anywhere you want. Uh, you could actually want to have this PD port over here as well, which I will display with the Barrel AX. Uh, but if you would like to see this over here, I'll show that as well for you if you guys want. Thank you again for your time.